Hey man, if you ever feel bad that you don't got a relationship, just remember that this started off like this. Aang's just a good friend, a sweet little guy, just like Momo. Thanks. What's good, everybody? I'm your host, Stitcher Stitches, the nerdiest nigga on the internet, and I've been recently rewatching Avatar, and bro, Aang really had it down bad for Katara. Like, we all know that Aang gets together with Katara in the end, but bro, I think y'all forget how many times man used to fumble. So today I'm going to talk about all the times that Aang fumbled and what he possibly could have done better. And I want to make this clear, I am by no means a sex expert and I am by no means a relationship expert. So take everything I say with a grain of salt because it might get you laid. <laughs> now I'm going to be clear, this goes both ways. First impressions are always everything. Because for example, imagine you're meeting somebody for the first time and they do some weird shit and then you guys become friends down the line. You're always going to remember that moment. And I can't lie, Aang did pretty good on his first impression. Even though this nigga was doing some weird shit at first, like when he was staring at her. But everything that Aang did in their first meeting was fucking perfect. Like real shit, think about it. He took her for a good time, he didn't try to pretend to be something he wasn't, and he showed her his morals by defending her village. Bro, if that didn't at least get her interested, I don't know what the fuck would. Like, look when Zuko took Aang, bro. She did not want this nigga to leave. Actually, it's because she didn't want him to die, dumbass. Hey, fuck you, pal. That's why you bitches on Valentine's Day. And nigga, where your bitch is at? She right here. Don't get cancelled, don't get cancelled, don't get cancelled. So next up, Kiyoshi Island. So these niggas touch down on Kiyoshi, right? And then they realize that Aang is the avatar. Then all the females on the island just start swarming him. Oh yeah, and this nigga. So Katara sees all the attention that Aang is getting from the opposite gender and then she starts to get jealous. Jealous? Of what? See, now here's what Aang fucked up. He realized Katara was jealous, but he messed up by pressing her on it. But bro, what the nigga really should have just done is just do what he's been doing. Just being himself and having fun. But nah, this nigga wanna do little spinny airbender tricks and show off in front of- <laughs> Like bro, why did Egg wanna show off in front of little kids, bro? What's good with that? See, Sokka had the right mindset. He went after people who was his own age. <laughs> But now though, tangent aside, really what Aang should've just done is chilled up on the beach with her. Think about it. Y'all are on an island that y'all have all to yourselves, basically. I would've been on that beach, yo. What the hell? But now though, even though they were arguing like an old married couple, they actually end up reconciling, so I guess it's fine. Now I know every nigga has been through this shit before. When there's a female that you like, and she likes somebody else. God damn, I remember that shit. That shit used to hurt the fuck out of me, boy. What? Can we all just agree that if Jet wasn't crazy, Katara would have been fell for this nigga? Like, bro, Jet had everything. This nigga had the look, he had the swag, he had the riz. Yo, this nigga had everything that Aang didn't, and it made him mad. I know Aang had to be pissed. And y'all want to know the best thing Aang could have done in this situation? Bro, Sokka, what do I do, bro? This nigga's about to steal my girl. Man, you want to know what I would have done in that situation, bro? Nigga, what? Tell me! Man, I would've killed that nigga with my boomerang. I ain't even gonna hold you. Couple times, cross the head, and this raps. Would you use the avatar state? I mean, shit, if I had it. <laughs> See, now, there's two things that Aang could've done, in my opinion. Number one, when a girl likes somebody else, move the fuck on, bro. That's gonna be an uphill battle, and it's gonna be one-sided as fuck. Do not waste your time. Or two, he could've made her see him as the better option. And bro is already the avatar, so if he couldn't do that from now, he's already fucked. But this video is already kind of getting long, so I'm gonna talk about two other instances. One where Aang did everything perfectly and took the fucking dub, and the other when Aang completely fucked everything up and ruined it. So let's talk about the fucked up shit first and end it off on a good note. So Aang finally fesses up to Katara about how he feels. Which I want to make clear, there's really nothing wrong with that if you're trying to get in a relationship with somebody. If you're just trying to smash, don't do this. But Katara explains to Aang she feels confused because everything that's going on between the war, her feelings for Aang, and just everything in general. But Aang doesn't really hear her side because he just wants to be in a relationship with her. And this nigga does the stupidest shit ever. This nigga kisses the girl when she just told you that she felt confused. Like, there's a time and place for everything, and this just wasn't it, bro. And Katara, don't think you safe either, bitch. You were playing with this nigga. Like, you kiss this man, like, what, five times throughout the series? Like, what the fuck do you think this nigga wanted to hold hands and sing Kumbaya? Like, no. To be honest, in my opinion, it's both their faults, because Aang should have known that she wanted him from the multiple times that they kissed throughout the series. And Katara, she's too fucking wishy-washy, bro. Like, I understand you're a waterbender, but that don't mean you gotta do the push and pull method, bro. If you don't know what that is, look it up. But nah, deadass, I remember the first time I saw this, I thought that was rats for their relationship. And that genuinely could have been, because Aang didn't listen to what she wanted, and she didn't listen to what the fuck he wanted. There needs to be a compromise. Now I'm excited to talk about this one, because Aang was really risen during this one. So these niggas sneak into the Fire Nation, and they all decide, man, fuck it, let's just throw a party. So the music starts playing, and everybody just starts being mad stiff. 
So Aang shows them a couple dance moves and they start to loosen up. My nigga Aang even pulls a female from the crowd. Even Katara got jealous. And a quick shout out to this man right here because he was busting down. But nah, Aang saw Katara sitting down and he's like, man, if you don't get your ass up and dance with me. Like she was really trying to make every excuse in the book like, oh, these shoes aren't meant for this. So like, bitch, get your ass up. So now Aang and Katara are in the middle of the crowd and Katara's all nervous. She's like, Aang, everybody's watching us. And bro, Aang couldn't have said anything better but this. Don't worry about that. It's just you and me right now. Like, bro, did you see that face she made? She knew to lock the fuck in. But nope, of course the popo always gotta ruin the party. So obviously they escape, and my nigga Aang ends the night off with a huge dub. Oh yeah, and quick tip, bro, if you go to a party, don't be one of the niggas who just stand in the corner. Because, bro, it looks weird if everybody's just dancing and you're the only person not doing anything. Like, at the end of the day, bro, with anything, you're just supposed to have fun with it, bro. Don't try to be stiff, don't try to look cool, just be yourself and have fun, bro. Like, I know that shit sounds cliche, but better to live the truth than live a lie, am I right? But yeah, hopefully you found something in this video useful. And if anybody has any other helpful tips, leave them in the comments. This is your boy Stitch, signing off. See ya, nerds!